three. All right, so I am here with Danielle Monk here, and I'm so excited to talk to you, Danielle, because you are a 2014 graduate of Walsh's Masters of Accounting program and a successful yes. entrepreneur. So I want to hear about your journey, and I want people to learn about you, about your experience at Walsh, and about your company and the important work it does now in COVID. So thank you for joining, Danielle. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to speak to you. I absolutely love Walsh. Um, so kind of background about me. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was born and raised in Detroit. Um, so I'm a Michigan girl. I recently relocated to Dallas, but Detroit will always be home to me. Um, I went to University of Michigan for my undergrad and I was initially on a pre-law path, but I graduated into the recession in 2009. Um, and so I, I took a look around and a lot of my attorney friends who were, you know, just passing the bar or just getting out into their careers were either stuck, you know, out of a job or being laid off or having their offers deferred for a year. So that really made me sit and reevaluate and look at what industries were actively hiring. Um, and that was accounting, <laughs> to be honest. And what I found and what accountants will always tell you is we're recession proof in a way. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So that piqued my interest in accounting and you know, it just kind of fit. I'm a numbers person. I did have an interest in the law. So tax was kind of the natural fit for me. Um, and then when I looked at schools, you know, I, I could have pursued the master's program at U of M. They have a great program. But I had to really think about my need to still work full time and have flexible scheduling. Um, and I had a friend who was already enrolled in his master's program at Walsh. And he really told me to take a deep dive. And when I was doing my research, I found that all of the uh, top programs, all of the um, firms, big and small, were recruited at Walsh. They all spoke very highly at Walsh. When I would go to some of the, um, like the student conferences, all the firms had really good things to say about the students coming out of Walsh and our preparedness to hit the ground running. Um, so, that really made the decision that much easier. Um, when I was a student, you know, when I, I got there and I was starting my classes, I found that most of the staff, most of the faculty really had an understanding and appreciation for most of their students being full time, you know, workers or, or being parents or having some different arrangement that you don't necessarily find at some other schools. Um, and that really that really made you know, going through this master's program and trying to start a new career that much easier, just having staff and faculty that um, they just kind of, you know, wrapped around you and gave you that support. Uh, I've had I remember I had one time where I was having a terrible day. I was coming from work and I had something happen to my car after work and couldn't make it to an exam. And the professor was just so like, you know, you've turned in all your work on time. We'll do this tomorrow. It's OK. <laughs> we'll do this tomorrow. You know, just promise that you will, you know, take care of what you have to take care of and then show up ready to take the exam. And it's stuff like that that really sticks out for me. Um, why that experience? I probably wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. So for that, I am totally, you know, I will always appreciate Walsh and I always tell people to really take a look at it. And then, you know, fast forward, I, you know, got employed. So I, I got picked up at BDO. That's where I started my career. Um, and then, you know, got to the point where I was sitting for my exams. I took my exams, passed them on the first try. And I really have to say it's because the teaching style, it was really for preparation to be able to do the work, pass the exams and get on with, you know, your career. Um, so I really, like I said, I can't say enough good things about Walsh and my experience there and how ready I felt um, to just start my career. Well, Danielle, um, you said a couple things I just want to first highlight. I mean, number one, you talked about how it's like accounting is recession proof. And that's so true because even what you're doing now and then what you're going to help to do in the years to come, because there's all this talk of are we heading into another recession? What's mm -hmm. it going to be like? You are going to be, you set yourself up so well for that. And we're going to talk about your business in a little <clears> bit. Too. I also yeah. loved how you talked about the personal attention. First of all, you said, you know, the Walsh had a good reputation in the community. You knew the brand for business. 
but you also saw that, you know, this worked for your life. It worked for a yes. flexible life, for family, for work, for, you know, everything you needed and that you really appreciated that. And that's something that Walsh is really known for. And you're just yes. an outstanding alum example of someone who saw that, took the initiative, enrolled, was very successful because like you said, the courses prepared you, but you stepped into that, you know, you passed and that's just amazing. So, I mean, you know, your experience is such a great testament to not only the college, but also to you as an alum. Yes. Like I said, I, I would not have gotten that anywhere else. Um, and I think that's something that Walsh prides itself on. And like, I don't know any other, you know, full-time mothers who were trying to work, you know, who could have also gone through a program and, you know, had a 3.5, 4.0 GPA and been able to keep that up. And like, you know, I had a lot of classmates who that was their life and it's really because of the format. Um, so I really appreciate that. Oh, it's so good. So now take us through from your, so BDO, I mean, we all know BDO, right? The, the yeah. commercials. Um, so, uh, take us through your journey from BDO to where you are now. All right. So I started, like I said, at BDO and tax um, right there in Troy. And from there, I went to a smaller firm because I wanted the experience of tax and audit, which is weird. Most tax people will never hear you or never say that, you know, I'm probably a unicorn, but I really wanted to just get that full breast of experience. Um, so I went to a smaller firm where I could do both. Um, and they were actually a BDO Alliance firm. And then I found my way to PwC, where now um, I'm still in their tax group. But I work uh, in provisions, which is really being the tax specialist plugged into the audit. So I really got to find that sweet spot where, you know, I'm kind of working in both worlds, so to speak, but still learning and working in tax technical. Um, I'm a senior associate approaching my manager promotion. I was actually the call before this was discussing that. Oh. Um, so this is my manager year. <laughs> uh, oh. Fingers crossed. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, yep. And I, I initially moved into the Detroit firm, into the Detroit um, office. And I absolutely love the Detroit PwC office. I really cut my teeth with learning, you know, how things operate in the big four there. And I had such great mentors there who still, you know, pull me in for work and all that. And they were incredibly supportive in making my um, transition down here to Dallas um, as smooth as could be. And so now I work in Dallas. I live in Dallas. Um, we moved December 1st of 2019. So we're coming up on one year living down here. Um, and it's just it's crazy that, you know, I wrote all these goals down and they happen, <laughs> you know, over some span of time. But. Uh, again, Walsh was such a big part of that. Um, and funny story, I'm actually married to a Walsh grad. He oh. did the MSF MBA program there um, and then went on to get his JD. And yeah, it really just kind of set the landscape for our careers. So. Oh my gosh, I love that. You're, it's kind of like the Walsh career family. That's so great. Yes. Well, and I like how you talk too about how, I mean, you're always in the build. You just seem to be like someone who's growing, who's advancing. So, you know, that's just amazing that you, that you, you have taken those opportunities and you've really stepped into them at a very challenging time in the world. And so yeah. you know, that just shows you the preparation. I also like something else that you said, you said, I had these goals that I wrote down and I just think that's so important for business people, for students, for entrepreneurs. Yes. You have to put your goals down. There's something that happens in the brain when you write them down. Is that what you found or what did you see? Yes. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, the, you see those graphs where it's like what people think success looks like, but what success really is. Yeah. Um, that's really been life. You know, when I came out of undergrad or I was approaching graduation from undergrad, I thought, okay, I would be a lawyer and a big fancy law firm and my life would just continue to grow and grow and grow. And then I think like most millennials or older millennials, life really smacked us in the face and said, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, and so it really helped. You know, one thing that helped was for me to sit down and say, what do you really need out of life? Because this particular career, 
may not happen that way. So what do you really need? And for me, that was a fulfilling career, something I could continue to grow in, um, something that would allow me to create something of my own, which is what I'm finally getting into now, and to have a family, which we're working on. Um, (laughs) So, you know, like, those are the big things. For the most part, I wanted to relocate and I didn't know how I would do that um, coming from, you know, a smaller program. Like, will it be well received across the country? You know, will people Mm -hmm. care that I went to this smaller school in the Midwest? And, you know, what I found is you got your foot in the door. Absolutely. It's respected. They're going to look into the program and say, okay, well, actually, this is still a top program. These graduates are as prepared for the CPA exam as anywhere else, if not more. Um, so yeah, it definitely, I'm a list maker. I, I, I make the list, I redo the list. Um, my girlfriends, we have a, a tight knit group of friends and we have um, a Google sheet tracker <laughs> where we're like, okay, this is what we say we're gonna do in 2019. Where are we? Let's update. Um, so I absolutely encourage that just because you know we say things and then we like file it away and never think about it. But, you know, even if you're not type A, it definitely helps you just yeah. kind of be honest with yourself and be accountable to yourself. Like, no, you said you wanted these things. Like, what are you doing to get there? Make sure you're doing something to get, get there. I like that you do that together <clears throat> with your friends because it creates this shared vision and energy and accountability to yourself and to others. And you know, I, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and they're like, well, I'm afraid to set a deadline or I'm afraid to write a goal down because what if I don't meet it? And yeah. it's exactly the opposite. It's you have to put something on the calendar. Like when you know you've got something coming up, your yes. brain starts to work to get you ready. And yes. then people don't like the pressure of it until they realize that's freedom. The worst yes. pressure is, oh, I'm never ready. I'm never ready. And you're right. Every New Year's comes around and we go, oh, we were going to do all these things. But yeah, oh, <laughs> I know, I know. It's like the New Year's Eve again, you know? So you're just a great example of that. I, I'm hoping that people Thank listening you. are going, okay, wow, this is a great, it's a great strategy. And I like that shared group that you have, the Google Doc. So Danielle, let's talk about business and let's talk about the business that you started and what you're doing and where you're seeing, you're serving <clears> the world, <throat> what you're doing for the world, because I'd love to be able to connect people to you and your company and, and just see that grow. So tell us about that. Um, so Fun fact about me, I started sewing. Um, I'm small, I'm 5'3. And so I started sewing just him in my pants because you can't find work pants to like fit small people, really. <laughs> and so um, my aunt gave me an old sewing machine while I was at Walsh, and I would just use it for that, never really thought about it. And then fast forward to when I was working um, on my CPA exams that became my outlet. So I just started, you know, sewing little dresses and skirts and that kind of thing. Um, But I never thought about growing it into anything past a hobby. And when we got situated in our home and the COVID crisis really started to hit, um, I just made me and my husband a couple masks and I decided, okay, well, if I'm going to make a mask because, you know, we have to wear them for safety, I'm going to make a cute one and I'm going to make something I can put my hair up in because I have to be on camera and I'm not going to be trying to get my hair cut and all that stuff. Um, so I really just posted like a free little uh, Facebook post showing a head wrap and coordinating mask that I made and it blew up. Like, I thought I was just posting something to say, hey, look at this cute thing that I made. You know, I'm back to sewing now. And I had an inbox flooded with requests. Are you making these? Are you selling them? You know, and so I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I should really do this. So I started off with just a a little bit of fabric and said, hey, guys, here are the prints that I have right now. Um, Get them before they're gone, kind of thing. And they just kept coming. And before I knew it, I, I made a post in April. Uh, I started doing this around March. I made a post in April. I think in two weeks, I had made a hundred and something orders. And I don't know how I did it. I was not sleeping. I was doing my PWC work. And then in the evenings, I was cranking them out and my veins are full of coffee <laughs> and nothing else. Um, 
And so from there, you know, I just started thinking about, okay, let's make this more than just this small thing that I do to get us all through COVID. Um, because really it was just people needed masks and nobody had masks. So let me give people something that they can use, that they can wash, that's practical. And that gives them a little dignity in it. Like, okay, we have to do this and we have to suffer through this thing together. It may as well be cute and we may as well own it and say, you know, this is stylish. Um, so that that was really the thought process. <clears throat> like I can just make something inexpensive and easy. And everyone that I know doesn't have a reason to not have something to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And it really has just continued to evolve. Um, so I eventually moved over to Etsy so I could stop taking, you know, orders through text message and and and, and my DM. Um, and that just continued to foster more growth. Like I, I have people that are coming out of, you know, from whomever who find me on Etsy or find me on Instagram and say, okay, this is gorgeous. I'm buying these. I have brides who are ordering them for all their bridesmaids. Wow. It is wild. And it is so exciting and also disheartening sometimes, you know, like, orders start to slow down some weeks or you wonder if people are really receptive to this thing that you're creating, but you really just got to do it and enjoy the whole journey. And um, that's kind of where I've been. So it's, oh, it's really a wild ride. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, but you know, you said a couple of things I want to highlight first is, you know, entrepreneurs, we just figure it out, right? You just figured it out. So you were yeah. like, how do I take orders? I can't do this until I take what you're like taking them on text. You know, you know, that's not the long-term vision, but you're doing what yeah. you need to do to meet the need. And then I love how you said, well, you know, I just thought I saw a need, I saw a demand and I might as well fill that and then look at it blew up. So you used your skills, your talent, sewing, you know, your business savvy, your ability to create and kind of see a gap like, OK, we have to wear these things now. Why can't they be stylish? Why can't they work? Right. With my, you know, and you filled that. And, and that's that creative thinking and problem solving that is hard to sometimes just get out of a textbook. You kind of have to learn that from like you said, faculty that have been in the business world, you know, our faculty mm -hmm. are first class, like we have faculty that have done work in companies and business and have experience in these things. So they can bring that yeah. into the classroom, they're credentialed, and they have this experience. So it's just beautiful that way to see that. So your yeah. business is called DM Handmade. Correct. Yeah. I love that. Now we're, you know, we're doing this video, we're excited to share it, because I'd love to be able to share it with our community. So if people want to order you know, if they want to order masks and they want to order hair wraps, I mean, I would love to be able to share that. So we'll put a link to the website, but you have an Etsy store, you said? Yes. And we're DM Handmade or Etsy. Um, right. We've been on since April. And like I said, it's just been a really amazing journey. Um, I actually have a couple. So I'll give people like a, this is what they look like. Oh, I love that. Love that. Oh. And so I make mask i make wraps um like those are some of the head wraps that i make there um and it's it's really just to you know just to you know have something beautiful that it, it like again keeps us safe it's practical but it's you know your expression like i love african prints i love prints from all over the world um these come from various parts of Africa. Um, these kind of uh, headbands that I have here, I get Italian crepes and oh. things from different areas. I love fabric, love it. And I've always loved fabric, right? Because I would make beautiful things for myself and just keep them and maybe have an Instagram poster here or there. And I never really considered this a marketable skill. And I, I just wonder how many people are sitting on hobbies or skills or you know things that you just do when you're trying to get away from work but you don't think about you know people really want that you know there if you put good things and the things that you work at to to perfect you put that out into the world with good intentions somebody's going to want it and somebody's going to support you in it yeah so i think that's like the biggest thing that i've learned like it's really easy to psych yourself out of doing something or say, oh, people don't want that. People don't need that. There are a thousand people doing that. There are. There are a thousand businesses like there out there like mine. So what? People are supporting mine. So I'm just going to keep doing it, you know, until I, I reach a point that it's not working. And if that hit, if I hit that point, I'll 
figure out another way to make it work, you know? (laughs) It's so good because, you know, I like how you said like, yeah, there's a lot of people that are doing this. So what I've got my clients, I've got, I've got my impact. I mean, you really saw a need to serve and to have impact. And, you know, I always think about business as really being that vehicle of service in the marketplace. It doesn't exist just for itself. It's there to support others, other industries, other ministries and missions, and just everything. So what you're doing is just, it's fabulous because it's really meeting a need. And I like how you said, you know, I didn't even know that this was something I could turn into a company. I could make a business out of, and you are, uh, and it yeah. really is set, setting that vision. So no, that's just exciting. I'm, I'm really excited about that. And you know, your accounting background too, how fabulous for the business side. Like I absolutely love the, the project of setting up my QuickBooks. <laughs> Like, you know, the accounting nerd in me was absolutely in love with that. Like, oh, I get to be creative, but still do the thing that I do every day. Um, so, yeah, it, that has really been very key because I know a lot of friends who, you know, have businesses and they always tapped me to help do that kind of thing. So on the weekends here there, I would be helping somebody set up their cookbooks or to walk them through the steps of getting their EIN and all that kind of thing. And it's just crazy full circle that now I've done that for myself Mm. um and i'm i guess i'm really thankful that i was already you know doing this work and had kind of started to master that because i couldn't imagine doing all the actual operation stuff and having to figure that out which i know a lot of business owners do and they probably struggle with it at first like Mm. being a one-man show is no joke. So I couldn't imagine, you know, not already knowing just how to, you know, be nimble with that and, you know, get things up and running. Oh, so true. Danielle, what advice would you have, you know, whether it's students who might be looking at Walsh or coming through Walsh, or even they're not sure about, should I stay in school? Should I finish my degree? What is the value of a, of a master's even? What would you tell them both as their students going through, but also as they go out into the world and maybe take their career to the next level? I think you need to really sit and evaluate first what you need out of life, you know, what you want. I think there's so many different paths that you can take, but you really have to sit back and say, okay, what's my list? What's my top five? For me, it was well, my number one thing was making enough money to live a free lifestyle. So mm-hmm you know, have being able to have kids, to move, to have a little bit of freedom. That was my number one thing. And I think that was really what tipped me into an interest in entrepreneurship, because at some point I might get tired of, you know, corporate life. You know, I like it for now, but I may need to come out of it at some point. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really nice to have this other venture that I can build into whatever it needs to be to suit that. So I think you really just should take a step back and say, okay, what do I want? Do I want to make a lot of money? It's okay to say that. (laughs) Like money at this point gives us freedom to do things and helps us provide for our families. And we should not feel bad about that. No matter, you know, who on TV says you should be more selfless. It's okay to say, I need to make X amount of money. Um, I want to fulfill a career. I want something that's going to be challenging and that I can continue to, you know, use no matter what path I take. I think accounting is really unique and you can do so much with this degree and with this background, you know, you can turn it into something creative. You can consult other businesses. You can build whatever you want. If you don't want to go and just work a regular nine to five, you can, you know, go into big four and have a really rewarding path to partner if you want. Um, so, you know, figure out what you want for you because, all the rest of the world, you know, is going to continue to change. You're never going to be able to control when a pandemic hits or when a recession hits. So figure out what you really want to do and what will really um, give you the freedom that you need. I think that's where I am with my life. I need a certain amount of freedom and ability to, you know, pivot and grow where needed. And again, I think that's where having the accounting background really, really helped me. For people who are, you know, considering whether if Walsh is the right place for them, I would say, honestly, Walsh is the right place for a lot of type of students. I think if you, you know, plan on working or you just want the real world experience and what's going to help you get there, but also have some wraparound services, I really think that Walsh is 
definitely a place to consider, you know, and that's no knock to any of the other universities in Michigan or big universities or even experiences out of the state. I had that big school experience. And honestly, I'm glad I chose Walsh to do my master's because it was exactly what I needed and exactly, you know, what prepared me for what those big firms were looking for anyway. It was perfect. Yeah. Um, and, and I really think that people should just, you know, what's the best way to say this? You know, make your list and understand that you're going to change the list. Some things aren't going to happen perfectly. You might have to defer some, some dreams or some goals and that's okay. You know, we, I'm very type A, so I need to do the list from top to bottom in perfect order and all that. Like I, that's how I operate. <laughs> but I, I think especially with moving and with, you know, starting the business, it's I've really come to understand that success will be there as long as you're working for it and just embrace that things are going to change and be nimble and be willing to just kind of roll with life as it comes. Um, but don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to write something on that list because you think it won't get done. Part of the beauty is it might not get done right or well, but whatever, you know, you just kind of have to roll with it as it comes. Yeah, so true. I like how you said too about, you know, money is freedom, right? Like a lot of times I think people, you know, their relationship with money is complicated because they think, well, yeah. I want to just chase money. But what you're really, you know, what you shared was it's freedom. It's freedom to be able to have the life with my family, the time, the, I don't have to live in that time pressure. I don't have to worry about, can I pay yes. my bills? And it allows you to do good in the world because it allows you yes. to start, start this business to really help others and, and serve others and have an impact. So it's really, I think in the book, The Go-Giver, it says money is an echo of value. And if you're creating yes. value in the marketplace, then you can serve more people and then you can have a freedom lifestyle. So you come out of that, that pressure. So, yeah, I, I love that you yeah. shared that. Thank you. And so much. Yeah, keep so going. to touch on that, um, yeah. it's really interesting. So, you know, we think of adding value to the world or um, doing things for other people and serving a greater good as something that's totally detached from money. Right. Mm. But like, so through my business, Yes, I'm meeting a need and I'm doing so at a profit, but it also enables me like, and when I have um, I have certain weeks that I devote just to making like some plain masks as a volunteer and shipping them to places that don't have them. You know, so there are certainly ways that you can be totally gratuitous and still, you know, run a business and still do things to help you put food on the table. So I really don't think that we have to stay in the mindset that you can't do good. And, you know, make money from it. Like you can definitely do both if you want. Yeah. You just have to, you know, have the intention and have the heart to really want to serve people. And I love, like I said, I'm super creative. I love, you know, putting things out there now as scary as it is sometimes and having people like it. <laughs> so yeah. if I can do that and serve like this gap, oh, it's right up my alley. I love that. I like how you said, I'm okay putting something out there. And, you know, a lot of times we're afraid to put something out there, which, you know, I understand because it can be yeah. a crazy world with, you know, media and social media, but you know, it's like, you got to put yourself out there to serve. And there's always going to be people that will have an opinion, right. And a comment, yeah. you don't worry about that. You think, who am I serving? Who am I, who am I giving to? And, and then you just hope those people will have an honorable heart with how they, they view it. But I love how you talked about that is, as far as like, it allows you to volunteer your time and to really be generous with it, but you can operate as a profit, you know, with a profit, yeah. so you have the ability to do that. Absolutely. So good, Danielle. Thanks for taking time. I can't wait to share this video with our community and with others, because I really think it's important that people hear your story, your journey, and also connect with your company and, and learn what DM Handmade yes. is doing and how you can really support that, that mission and, and that work. So thanks so much. You're welcome. And if there are any Walsh alumni or students or will be students who maybe have more questions or just want to chat about life or where they're taking things, I'm definitely open to it. Like I said, oh. I absolutely love Walsh. Um, I absolutely love Michigan. That will always be home. Um, so except oh. the weather, you guys can keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have better weather than us. 
That's so generous of you, Danielle. Yes. Thanks so much. And we'll make sure we share a good contact for you. So if people want to reach out, they can connect and, and ask questions and learn more. So sounds Certainly. good. Certainly.